Warning, this piece is getting painted. <laughs> but don't worry, she turns out great. Hey friends, and welcome to another Upcycle by Brie. Last furniture flip, I showed you a beginner flip from beginning to end. This time I'm gonna show you a flip that is a lot more detailed. I remember the day we brought this piece home. Chad had been driving around in the Jeep and told me that there was a dresser that I just had to see. So we went to take a look and I had to contain my excitement as we pulled up. I talked to the homeowner for a little bit and she ended up selling me this buffet for $25. There's a little damage on two of the feet here and a tiny bit of structural repair to do, but other than that, it's in great condition. Starting right in on the structural repair, I've got to get this nail out. They nailed the backer straight down through the top, missing their target. Man. Why? I am back behind this piece right now. I have the drawer pulled out and you can see that this decorative piece is loose. So I'm going to go ahead and reinforce it from the back with just a basic L bracket. On the back side here, there was a little bit of sagging through this back piece. So I went ahead and used this junk wood as leverage, um, since I don't have anybody here to help me, to raise up this back panel. And I added a support here in the back. And then this was a previous repair um, with some plates because I think of this crack right here. And this crack is caused by a nail that has been driven through here and is now causing that separation, which causes the drawer track to sag, which causes the drawer not to actually even sit on the track. So <laughs> we're gonna see if we can't fix that. There's I've got my Gorilla wood glue and a palette knife. I'm using that palette knife to get into the tiny little cracks and crevices without damaging this drawer track anymore. And instead of driving a nail straight through, I have got this T-bracket. I've got one screw screwed into the bottom, one screw that's screwed above that crack, and then you can see pieces of it go over onto the back as well. So this is going to be a lot more secure. And now I'm adding a screw straight up through the, whoops, <laughs> that happens, straight up through the bottom of the piece. It's not going to be perfect. It's been, you know, fixed um, over the years by previous people, but these brackets are much more secure than just driving nails through it. And you can see now, I still have just a little gap right here, but for the most part, now the drawer sits on the track. Now remember, I am not a professional furniture restorer. I usually paint furniture but I've learned a couple tricks. I'm going to glue these pieces of veneer back down. I'm using a little medicine dropper and a palette knife. That way I can get underneath the veneer without breaking it off and raising it even more. I'll apply a little painter's tape to hold the veneer down tight while it dries. That weighted medicine ball is holding a little bit of bubbled veneer down while it dries. And now I'm just gonna start sanding the front with my orbital sander. You've got to be super careful with veneer. If you apply too much pressure or use too low of a grit, you're going to burn right through that thin layer of wood. In my spray bottle, I have some of this TSP substitute. This is going to help me clean this piece since it has so much age and character, we'll say it needs a good scrub. Um, I have this kind of just beat up bottle brush cleaner. I get them from the Dollar Tree because they have the skinniest wire 
on um, any that I found and they fit really well down into bottles and tight little nooks and crannies and they're only a dollar so. to keep the legs natural wood on these. I'm gonna go ahead and use some citrus strip to get the old um, stain and top coat off. Please make sure you're reading all the safety precautions before using any chemicals or power tools. I'm applying the citrus strip with a little chip brush and then I will cover it with cling wrap to just make sure the citrus strip doesn't dry and it speeds up the process a bit. It's been about three hours and I'm going to go ahead and remove the saran wrap. And so here in my bucket, I've just got some regular Dawn dish soap and I'm going, I've got a plastic brush. It's fairly soft. You don't want to um, brush too hard because you will leave marks in your wood. I have learned that the hard way. And then I've got a rag here that I also just plan to throw away. I don't want to run this through my washing machine. Here is a peek at the legs after they have dried overnight. And you can see they're very dry. They're gonna need a nice drink of water, but I'm actually loving how they've come out. Let's give this broken foot a little bit of a fancy touch. My friend Kim has been kind enough to let me try out one of her IOD molds. I'm going to be using the air dry clay with it today. Never tried this before, um, but I watched a couple super simple videos on the IOD YouTube channel. So we're gonna give it a shot. I'll start off by applying just a little bit of cornstarch into the mold that helps the air dry clay from sticking to the mold. When you're not using your clay, make sure you're keeping it in an airtight container so it doesn't dry out. I grab a little piece off and start rolling it into a snake, just like Play-Doh. Next, we will take and press the clay down into the mold. I would say the biggest mistake I made was not cleaning up the edges before I pulled the clay out of the mold. You can see how easily that the mold has come out of the form, but you can see like where my edges are a little bit messy. So I kind of pick a little of those off. Once it's dry, I took some sandpaper and kind of cleaned it up and it wasn't a big deal, but it would have been easier to do while it was still in the mold. So lesson learned. Now I'm just using some wood glue, applying it to the back and we will get it onto this foot. I'm gently placing the mold against the curves of these legs using a very delicate touch so I'm not damaging the imprint of the design. The mold is applied. Now we will let the glue dry and we'll move on to the next step. This looks kind of strange now, but just wait. The body of this piece will get a few good coats of shellac. I'm going to go ahead and use some plastic to cover up the top and the legs since I will be leaving those natural wood. The shellac is going to help seal in any grease or oil I might have missed while cleaning. It's going to help keep those wood tannins from coming back through when I paint and make painting this piece white a whole lot easier. Whew, that was a lot of work, but she is prepped and ready for paint. This day I was spraying several pieces in my garage. I'm using my HVLP Central Pneumatic Sprayer from Harbor Freight. I won't go too into detail on the sprayer today, but there's a couple basic nozzles. This one's going to adjust the flow of paint into your machine. This one is going to adjust the vertical or horizontal spray pattern. This one's going to adjust the airflow into your machine, and this one will adjust 
the narrow or wideness of your spray pattern. Here I'm going to place my filter in and place the paint cup on top. A little struggle here. <laughs> On the lid you'll see me pull out this little plug if you try to spray with that on um, your cup won't be able to breathe and the paint won't come out as well opening a fresh can of white swan that's always a great feeling and when you are spraying the ratio of your paint is going to be a three to one paint to water and I'm making sure I strain my paint through a strainer to avoid getting any chunks in there give it a little stir and then a whole bunch of shake here is a look at the air compressor I use. I've been very happy with it. I believe it was around $290 at Home Depot. You'll need to make sure you do your research on the temperature of your spray room, the protection equipment, and ventilation that you will need. I can go more in depth on that on a future video if you're interested, or there's a ton of YouTube videos out there already. This makes quick work of this buffet. I was actually able to get six pieces of furniture painted this day. After one coat of paint, you can tell how dry that wood was. It is just soaking it up. And to be honest, this does not look great. That bleed through popped back through on the doors. So I'm going to give it another coat of shellac, let it dry, and then we will hit it with a second coat of white swan. All right, I got another coat of shellac on. It's all dry. Um, you can see how the shellac makes it appear yellow too. So even though it says on the can that it's completely clear, it is not. But don't worry, that should stop the bleed through. Let's go ahead and get coat number two on. Not gonna lie, after one coat, this buffet was looking pretty bad. After two coats, whew, what a difference. That DIY paint covers so beautifully. Now it's time for distressing. This is the fun part. I am using a 220 grit sandpaper, making sure I'm being very careful along those ornate details so I'm not damaging the wood, but just giving it a touch of that old worn look. When distressing, again, think about the edges, the raised pieces, the areas around the handles that all would have been worn down naturally over time. that I have the piece distressed, it's time to remove the plastic. This is the exciting part where I kind of start to see the vision come to life. Time to make this mold look like it belongs on the piece. I am painting it with a coat of white swan using a small little detail brush. And then we will seal that dry white swan up with some DIY clear wax. To give it the age look to match the rest of the piece, I will be using DIY dark wax, making sure I get it down in all these little nooks and crannies and then I will wipe back the excess with a paper towel. Now this looks like it belongs on the piece a lot better. Let's take a look at it before the dark wax and after the dark wax. The body of this piece will get sealed with clear wax as well. I'm applying it with a wax brush using long, even strokes, making sure to get in between all those little details. On the legs and the top of this piece, I will be using Sweet Pickens Oil Wax to give it a beautiful finish. Just using a chip brush to apply it. Then you let it sit for about 15, 20 minutes to soak in and wipe the excess off with a clean cloth. Mm -hmm. 
when applying the oil wax to the top I'm using long even strokes getting the oil wax on and then I go over and do a skim coat just making sure it's all smoothed out and even once I have it all on again it'll sit for about 15 or 20 minutes and I will wipe off the excess with a clean cloth you can see how much it richens up this wood what a beautiful color we are getting closer to matching the color of the legs but I think I will go ahead and apply a coat of dark oil wax this dark oil wax darkened it up just enough that you can see down at the bottom it matches those legs a lot better now oh I am so happy with the way it turned out what are you thinking so far once it is dried for about 20 minutes I'm wiping off all of the excess oil and this wood grain is just beautiful I'm so happy I kept the top original wood step was to add on some new hardware I have got a huge stash of vintage hardware so I found some brass poles and I think they are much more sophisticated And here is a look at the completed piece. I have named her Kimberly Snow and she is available $395. I will be taking her up to Adams on Tuesday. If you are local, she is available for local pickup. Feel free to message me on Facebook. I hope you enjoyed today's makeover. I will be back on Thursday with another episode of Show Me Your Junk. I'm going to show you my thrifting hoard. I have got to get some things done and I will bring you guys along with me. Be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. Give me a thumbs up and share with a friend who you think might like this video as well. Until next time, I'll see you later. Bye friends.